Um, when I was young, uh, I, well, I, I, I can't swim. Um, that's one of the two, two things that I wish I, I know how to do. One is to swim and another is to dance. Um, uh, when I was growing up, um, I had a lot, a lot of, um, um, in my hair, I, I don't know how you call it in English, um, you, you have this swirling um, things in your... Uh, Palette. Okay, that's, I have too many of those. And so, and so when I was young, the, um, the elders, in, especially in the provinces, would say, don't um, ride a, bangka, a, a small boat because it will topple over. Um, so that's, uh, I, I thought I would lose my life every time. I would lose a lot of um, things in the water every time. Um, and, uh, a lot, and some other experiences with water was I really tried to to interact and to, to go deep into the water and and the only times that I, I managed to go deep was also really the time that I nearly <laughs> drowned. So yeah, so maybe that's as a starting point that's what water is to me. Um well I love swimming. I know how to swim. I, I learned to swim when I was really young. Um and uh, <clears throat> I guess I haven't really thought about it quite this way, but a lot of times when I when I swim, it's kind of like an escape. It's a chance to kind of just get out of your everyday existence. Um, and uh, I think there's some of that in this film, kind of an escape from what you normally experience. Um, but also with water, I feel like especially with the ocean or with rivers, there's kind of this continuing, um, continual energy. So it, it's like kind of a, a driving force that keeps things going. Um, it's like ever changing, but kind of repetitive at the same time. Um, so that's something that, that uh, I think a lot about with water. And, and maybe you could talk a little bit about where your film is shot because it's really a lot of locations, I think, in a lot of different places, but in a way it feels like they're all connected by this con continuum. So it feels like they're connected places, but I, I, they're not, I understand. Yeah, yeah, um, I, this was a film that took a long time to, I mean, it was four years all in all of shooting and editing and trying to figure out exactly what to do. And um, so some of it was shot in Oregon, on the uh, coast of Oregon. Uh, some of it was shot in, uh, on a river in New Hampshire. Um, some of it was shot in, um, uh, upstate New York, and then some of it was shot in Brooklyn, where I live now. Um, so it, it kind of spanned all these different locations, and um, I mean, as you can see, it kind of became something that became a connecting force with all these different locations. Um, and again, I guess that goes back to that, this kind of ever-changing but kind of cyclical path that uh, that I found with water that I thought about when I was working on the film. And then maybe was, since we're talking about place and different locations, I was wondering if John could talk a little bit more about the location where your film was shot and that area and what's particular about that region or? Okay, um, um, I shot it um, around 12 hours north of Manila by, by land. Um, it's my mother's hometown. Um, I initially wanted really to, to shoot there for practical practical reasons because um, I knew I, I had a lot of willing um, actors in the, <laughs> in the in the town because of my mom's family. Um, it, 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 what what was more important for me is was to to take my time to to go back to 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 the place where where I spent my childhood summers with and to meet the old faces, uh, old, old, old faces and um, new relatives that I, 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 I wanted to meet there. Um, so that was really the, the initial um, need for me to, to go there and spend a lot of time. Because what I, I shot the film um, for the first time in um, 35 millimeter. That was my first time. and, and we didn't have a lot of resources really to, to use, so um, that was my my um, my home team that was that was um, all uh, helping me out. Are there any questions from the audience? Comments? Also
organization. Okay, uh, that's not the fun. Um, I made use of the, the, the green uh, footage with uh, uh, scenes from a uh, film in the 70s by this really, really good um, Filipino filmmaker who made his mark in the 80s. Um, his name is Ishmael Bernal. Um, so he, he made um, 40, he's, uh, he passed away now, he made around 40 films um, and midway to the filmography he had a lost film. And uh, the footage that you saw was the film before the lost film. Because I was so intrigued by, by the, the space that was, that was left behind by this. And I didn't want, I, I had no concern about what, what the film was. Because basically that film was made, it was never shown to the public, but um, had a disagreement with a, the with a producer and he burned it. Um, so I didn't, I didn't want to, to look at this space and recreate this. Um, instead, I, I took inspiration from the, from the characters, from them, who was really the girl who wanted to be an actress, and a boy who was an extra who wondered, uh, who, who just sat on a bench and wondered as this lady, uh, as, as this woman passed. Um, another inspiration for the, for the film is that um, one night I was drinking with a, with a friend of mine, um, we were, we were talking about his um, childhood in the province, and I misheard him saying something really important. He said that, uh, so I, I thought that he said that his father was a tikbala, a half horse. And so we spent the rest of the night um, with, with all, of his <laughs> all of his stories, and I imagined he was a half horse, and he knew, he believed he was a half horse. Um, so this was something very, very, very interesting for me. How, how can this be? And eventually I knew that one syllable was added into my hearing. And to, it, it just, it, he just really meant that um, Atik Bala, this half, half horse, played tricks on him. And it was just in Filipino, one sentence, that I, one syllable that I thought I heard. So I, I thought, I, I, I think I want to, to pursue this. <laughs> Um, and all, uh, this carries a big meaning for me because um, I also, as, uh, um, as much as I expose my, my, my um, relationship with Fil Fil Filipino films, watching Filipino films, I have also experienced in my childhood having a production crew shoot in our house. Um, one day I really wake up and there, there's this, uh, there's Nora Honor, this really famous uh, mainstream actress, just having this switch all the time, acting and not acting. Um, crying, and then as she crosses the screen, she she laughs and plays to the crowd. And then I, I remember going out to the garage and and remember just taking a piece of paper, and two people would rush onto me and just pick the piece of paper and um, put it back to its place. And I never really understood this. Of course, I knew there was a shoot going on, but I was interested in the transformation of everything because of this switch. Any any other questions? And two questions. Is that a form of keynote or massage, what they're doing to the faces of the folks? Oh. <laughs> and then also, also um, you didn't mention where in Cordillera your mother's family is from, and is the Tikbalan um, an indigenous mythology that's close to your family or, or the people? Okay, um, the f first one is the, the, the massage that you see in the, in the barber shop. Um, it's, it's how we do it after, after the, the haircut. We really enjoy this. And <laughs> this is where some of, the, some of us really can think um, and enjoy, <laughs> um, enjoy our new look and <laughs> new start. Um, but the second, second is, um, Tikbalang is uh, really um, not specific to just uh, uh, in Isabella where, where my, 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 my mother um, was from. Um, but um, all throughout the regions, we have 7,100 islands in, 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 in the Philippines and it's kind of um, consist consistent not only to the northern, central and then southern islands that we have this um, half horse, half man creature in our mythology. Any other questions? Any other questions? 
talk a little bit more about that the creature and its characteristics and yeah, how it plays a role? Oh, okay, oh, the, this this tick um, it's like a centaur, um, a human body, um, a horse feet and horse uh, head. Uh, it's supposedly a trickster. Trickster, um, he, he supposedly, um, if you go to, to nature and you're either too rowdy, you know, he can make you lose your way. Um, so there's this thing about um, disappearing bodies. And um, um, it's very real. It's like, especially when uh, I, I told you about my friend who, who said that um, I heard, uh, I, I misheard him saying yeah, his father's like, well, no. But uh, he really believes that um, this mythical creature really played tricks on them. And it's this real to them, especially in the provinces. And I got to spend glimpses of this whenever I spent childhood. I, I was born in the city, but I'd always go there during my, my childhood. Um, yeah, so aside from that, um, um, I wanted to, I wanted also to, to show that this, um, this connection with with the, with the river of losing memories and finding finding films finding instances finding memories and I I was always wondering uh, maybe because a lot of a lot of um, films have been made in the provinces and they just disappear uh, after they've made the films and I was wondering maybe uh, maybe if I I'd be able to revisit some of the communities maybe I'd I'd find some other people who still. Um, <laughs> believe in the in the story of the films that they made and still not quit playing all these roles and but now believe this and even even with the uh, initial screenings with with my my small group um, I, I and with, with my actors I I ask them and and ask them if they really believe of if they needed this river and yeah they some of them really told me that maybe it's easier to have this river um, in their village to afford them to lose just even one memory. How does this movie compare to your other films? I haven't seen it. Okay, um, I, it's usually I, I start with uh, not really a script. Um, I just go shoot, shoot with um, diary footage and without much of a plan. But this time, uh, because I was shooting on 35, I knew I had I, I had to have a plan. Uh, but I, so I had a script. Basically, the difference was I had a script and I still threw it away. Um, but I I had this idea that I wanted, and even though I didn't force myself into um, shooting everything that was on script, um, I think it was still similar. But um, in a lot of ways, I was I was. Um, depending on the help of other people to focus the camera, to load the film, to wait, um, to have them processed, to wait again, you know. Um, and yeah, um, I just depended on more people this time. But similar, similar things. But what, actually one, one major thing is I don't have my narration, my, my voiceover. I usually had my, my voice. In the film. Any other questions? The, the color of red and yellow is very significant in, in this film. Red means the Marcos dictatorship, which was, uh, uh, which was from 1970s uh, to the early 80s. Um, but he remained in power for 20 years. He was, uh, there was a dis dictatorship until in 1986. There was a anti revolution. There was democracy, or democracy restored, and uh, Marcos was overthrown. Um, when, I was, when I was young, um, because my parents were from the north, this this place, I wore red, and um, I didn't know the, the 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 significance of this. And we, I, I just transferred in school where there were yellow shirts all the, all around, um, and it's supposed to be me, meaning change and democracy. 
um, and so this is a, this had a meaningful impact on me growing up had to change colors because I knew now what, what it stood for um, and now that I'm I'm in my late late 30s and I, 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 I see other other I see first that Marcos, um, the, 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 the son and the daughter, are back in power as elected officials. Um, also, I see that a lot of, a lot of um, even university graduates don't know uh, who Marcos is really um, in such a way that um, there is a fear now uh, saying that maybe um, his, the, the oppression that was, that was, um, that was uh, committed during the dictatorship was never really happened. There. Any other questions? I, I have one more question for Kathleen and, and John. I just was wondering about both both of you choose to shoot in film and and I know that's becoming a more and more challenging material to shoot and to find places to project. So I just and I'm a little curious about your choice. I mean, it's, it actually seems like a kind of an obvious question because the quality of the film in your films is so, it seems so central, but I'd like to hear you talk a little bit about it. Yeah, um, I think that uh, <clears throat> I've shot with different cameras and different kind of formats, and I find that a lot of times how I shoot really depends on what kind of camera I'm working with. And um, all of that was shot with a 60 millimeter Bolex. And um, with that camera, I feel like I just have a more thoughtful way of observing things around me. And um, it's a camera that I can manage on my own and I can try double exposures. I can use a little pinhole lens. So it, it just opens up a lot of creativity within the camera. Um, and I... Um, find like the, the way that it's translated onto 16 millimeter film is just so rich and it um, kind of gets me excited about looking at the world around me. So um, I, yeah, I'm trying to stick with it as long as I can. <laughs> yeah, sim similar to her, um, I, I felt, because I started with, with, with video, with digital, and I, I, I feel that I have a lot more things to explore with with, with film, um, and it was a great starting point for me to have this and um, to be able to think about my my old uh, film heroes in the in the eighties who who just worked with film, so that also grounded me in a way and um, <laughs> and because uh, I, I used to say just shoot 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 you know it's it's it can it's easy it's easy but but now I, I see the, the the rigor of it. Um, with, with the film and having to depend on a lot more uh, people for help really just humbled me a lot. And I think I can explore some, some more of this. Great, thanks. Are there any more questions? I just said, well, you can have another opportunity to listen to John. He's going to be in conversation with uh, visiting critic Gabe Klinger on Tuesday at 3 o'clock at our urban space media tech festival hub in 401 Richmond Street. So come and listen to that conversation and learn more about John Torres. Thank you very much, John and Kathleen, for your wonderful films.